Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Pristi, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you PLSQL triggers. So let's begin. PLSQL triggers are much like the trigger that you would see in a machine gun where you press a trigger and a bullet comes out. So the definition of triggers is a named PLSQL block stored in the Oracle database and executed automatically when a triggering event takes place. So it works much like a gun and that is why it is named a trigger. The triggering events that can cause the trigger to execute are insert, update, delete, create, alter, startup, shutdown, or login. And there are many other events that can cause your trigger to implement. Triggers are used in PLSQL for the following reasons. Number one, to enforce complex business rules that cannot be established using integrity constraints like primary key and foreign key and check constraints. They are also used to prevent invalid transactions in order to maintain the consistency of the database. Triggers are also used to generate value automatically for derived columns. For example, you might have a column in your table, which is date of birth. And using that, you would want to uh, calculate the age of a person and store it in another column. This can be done using a trigger without having to insert age separately. You can actually calculate it from another column. Trigger is also used for auditing sensitive data. And lastly, triggers are used for gathering statistical information on table accesses. This allows you to know who accessed the table at what time and what changes they made to the table. So in case there are some discrepancies, you can know which person is responsible for creating that. Now let's see the syntax of a PLSQL trigger. It is divided into two parts. There is the header and the body. The header looks like this. And here, the beginning part is create or replace trigger. This is much the same as writing create or replace procedure or create or replace function or anything of that sort. And in a trigger, we also do the same thing. Here we mentioned replace because if we already have a trigger with the same name, then we can replace it instead of getting an error. And that brings us to the name of the trigger. You can name your trigger anything you like, um, just like you would name any identifier in PLSQL. The next part is the before or after. So this is where you specify when you want your trigger to execute. Is it before some event or is it after some event? And the next thing is the triggering event. This is the event which will cause the trigger to implement. For example, if somebody does um, an insert into some table and you want an event, a triggering event to occur when this insertion takes place, then that would be a triggering event. Insert would be a triggering event. And so you can specify whether you want your trigger to happen before this event or after this event. The next part is on table. So this is the um, this is the place where you will specify on which table exactly this event is taking place. You don't want to perform the trigger on every type of table in which insert takes place. You might want to do it on a certain type of table. So you will mention that if insert takes place on this table, then I want my trigger to execute. The next part is for each row. In PLSQL, there are two types of triggers. The first one is a row level trigger and the second one is a statement level trigger. And in this video, I'm going to explain only the row level trigger, which uh, executes every time a row is affected. So for example, if you're writing an update query, then we all know that update query is not going to affect each and every row of the table if you have specified some condition. For example, um, if I want to increase the salaries of all the people of a certain department, then 
only those roads where that department name occurs will get affected. So for each affected row, the trigger will execute. But you can also have a statement level trigger, which will get executed uh, no matter how many rows are affected. And it will not uh, execute per row. It will execute per statement that you write in SQL. The next part is the follows or precedes another trigger. So this is where you can link one trigger to another trigger. So if you would like uh, two, three triggers to execute on the same kind of table, then you can mention the follows or precedes condition to show which trigger should take place first and which should take place next. Then the next statement is the enable or disable. So if you, obviously if you write enable, the trigger is going to execute. If you write disable, then the trigger will not execute. And by default, this statement is usually skipped because if you skip it, then the trigger is enabled on its own. Now let's see the body of the trigger. The body of the trigger looks like this. And you'll notice that this is much like any other PLSQL uh, block. So there's nothing different here. There's a declare part, begin part, ex exception, and then end. So this is nothing different than a PLSQL block. So that's it about triggers. And now I'm going to execute one in PLSQ. To implement this trigger, I'm going to use this table that I already have created, which is uh, the emp table. So select star from m. It contains uh, this many rows. And also, I can show you the schema of this table, which looks like this. So there are five columns, and these are their data types. And you can create this uh, same kind of table if you like. Uh, let me show you the data type if you cannot see it properly. Okay. So you can create the same type of table if you like, or you can create your own table. It doesn't matter. What I want to show here is creating a trigger which will execute each time somebody tries to delete something from this table. So if someone tries to delete something from this table, then immediately there will be another table in which the first name and last name will be stored of that employee whose data got deleted, along with the date and the name of the user who deleted that row. So that's what I want to do. So in order to do that, I also need to create another table where the deleted data and information about who deleted that data can be stored. So for that purpose, I'm going to create a table and I'm going to name it emp del table to show that this is the deleted data. In this table, I am going to have first name and I'm going to give it the same data type as the first name in my emp table. So first name, next one is last name. This is variable character two with size 20. And the next next column that I want here is depth. I do not want depth code and salary and employee ID. It's all right. If you want, you can include it, however. I Next, I want to know on which date it was deleted. So this is a column called delete date with the date data type. And I also want to know who deleted it. So deleted by, and this would have a variable character data type, and maybe um, I can give it a size 20. And that's it. Then I can close this and create my table. It says table created. Now let's go and create the trigger, which I'm going to do in Notepad and then copy paste. So the first statement we need to write is create or replace trigger. And now I need to give a name to the trigger. So I would like to give it the name emp delete details. So this is a very meaningful name. You can give it whatever name you like. And after that, I want to mention when this trigger must execute. 
So I want it to execute before anything is deleted from the table. So that's why I'm going to write down here before delete. So before anything gets deleted from the table, this trigger will get executed. And on, I need to mention which table this trigger should execute on. So it is on my emp table. At this point, I'm going to write for each row. The reason behind this is that if I do not mention this, it is going to run a statement level trigger, which is the default type of trigger in BLSQL. And this trigger only works on some particular statements. It does not work on each and every row that is affected by the delete query written. So that's why you need to particularly mention for each row. And after this, the header part is over. Whatever else is present in the header, like enable, disable, and all, that is all not compulsory. You may or may not mention it. It's all right. So now we're going to begin the body of the trigger where I will write the declare part. Here I'm going to declare all the variables that I require. I only require one variable and that's going to be the deleted by variable to store the name of the user that deleted that particular value. So deleted by and I'm going to give it variable character 20 as a data type, which is the same as uh, what I did here when I created, I created variable character 20. So the same thing I'm going to give in my trigger statement also. Now, after this, I'm going to start the execution. So here I'll write begin. And the first thing I want to do is get the name of the user. So for that, there is a statement that you can write, which is select user into delete by. So this is the variable I have created. In this variable, I want to store this user's name. So I've written it like this. And rest of the select statement is as like a normal select statement. So here you need to write down from dual. Dual, if you remember, is a table already present in SQL and you can use it. And when you write select user from dual, it will give you the name of the current user, which is uh, logged into the system. Now, once I've got the username, I only need to write a simple insert query now. So a simple insert query to insert this data into my um, table which is going to store the information and that table is my emp del table. So I'm going to write down insert into emp underscore del. It contains first name, last name, it contains the delete date and it contains the deleted by as the next column. Now in this I want to insert these values. So first name should come from the from the actual table, whatever data got deleted, that person's first name and last name should come. For that purpose, you need to write down old dot first name. You need to make colon here and then old dot first name. So this will store the data that got deleted. And also old dot last name because this too we require from the deleted data. And now for getting the date, you can just mention sys date. This date is a function in SQL. It's a built-in function that will give you your system's date. So I can just write sys date. And now I already have the name of the user in my del underscore by uh, variable. So I can just mention that. So del underscore by and bracket semicolon. And that's it. I can end this. And this trigger is actually ready. And I can just copy all of this and go to my SQL command line. Here, uh, I'll just clear the screen. And in this case, I've not done any DBMS output put line, but still, I can uh, do my set server output on statement if I like. It's not going to do any harm. Now, in the edit part, I'm going to select on, uh, click on paste, and you can see the trigger is pasted. 
and now I'll hit enter and forward slash to run it. And it says trigger created. At this point, you must uh, note that you might get an error here, which, which will say trigger created with compilation errors. It won't mention where exactly this error has happened. So you would have to find it out on your own. So you'll have to check everything and find out the error and then try to implement it. So you can just go back in the video and check your syntax if, if you're getting an error here. And hopefully you're not getting an error. So now the trigger is ready. And let me see my table, the emp table. It looks like this. Now from this table, I'm going to delete certain things. So I, I want to delete all the people who are in the accounting department. So for that, I'm going to write a query, delete from emp where depth code equal to accounting. So this would make sure that uh, three rows are deleted because there are three people in the accounting department. And now, as expected, my trigger should actually store all this in the second table that I've created, which is the emp del table. So let's take a look at that one. Select star from emp underscore del. And you can see, as expected, it is storing the first name and last name of all the people whose data got deleted. And plus, it tells me on which date it happened. So my system's date right now is 28th September. And that is what it is showing me. And along with that, it also shows me who deleted it. So right now, I'm logged into this SQL command line from my system username, which is the administration username. So that's why it is showing system. If you log in from any other user's um, side, uh, if you've created your custom user and you're logging in from there and then trying to delete data from here, then it will show your name over there. It will show that username over here. So that's how um, triggers work in PLSQL. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.